Marsha Gay Harden, when we saw you in your Oscar-winning role in Pollock, you were the long-suffering wife of an alcoholic. Mm. Here, you don't take any guff from anybody in God of Carnage. The play, by the way, that, that most of us pundits think is a slam dunk to win best play. And, of course, Marsha's up for best <laughs> actress. Good luck. We'll talk about that in a second. But yeah. first of all, I just love the contrast of roles, that this feisty mm -hmm. suburban wife. Tell us about her. When you first meet her, her name is Veronica Novak. When you first meet Veronica, she's defending her son who's been um, beaten up by another kid. And she's very polite, you know, the napkin over the knee, very polite and not really soft-spoken, but uh, about manners and about civilization. And by the end of it, she's pounding James Gandolfini, her <laughs> husband, <laughs> within an inch of his life. It's about what happens when the rules uh, disintegrate and when when people are judging other people sort of unfairly and, and this need for all of us to be right and, and how, where we'll go when we feel that we're not heard. It's about really many, many things. There's just a few of them. That it's and about. it's a comedy, which is what's really interesting mm -hmm. about this thing. And it's uh, a comedy that's a runaway train because it's 90 minutes without uh, – intermission interruption and it builds and it builds and right. it builds and what I, where I'm going with this is sometimes the train goes off track uh, the night I saw it you and James had a moment where you both just almost lost character and laughed right. at each other got back on 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 mode and went forward and you saved it was that the night of the pop the cork pop yeah that it popped then what was it? What was it that made? No, what was I don't it remember made what go? made it what was it the night the phone uh, kept ringing or we couldn't find the phone no Okay. I can't remember what it was, but I remember this awkward freeze yeah. between the two of you and this smile, and then you got back well, going Well, there was again. one moment just a while ago. Things do go crazy all the time once we couldn't find the phone. I mean, it's, I don't mean to present it like the fun is things going crazy, but the great thing is when they do go crazy with Hope Davis and Jeff Daniels, myself and James Gandolfini, we're already a team, so we know how to stay in that and the format. But sometimes, you know, it's live theater, and, and I have... I have. I hate to say it, but I have definitely lost it on stage. And the irony of this show, of course, is that the two sets of suburban parents that get together to discuss their bad children turn out to be much worse than the kids. Well, that's true. We're, we're talking, trying to talk in a civilized way about how the kids should behave. But as neither side is heard, it's almost like I think my character wants the other side to say, okay, our bad. You want an apology, and an apology allows you to be graceful. Think about when, when someone's late. And, and if they don't walk in going, sorry, I'm late, there's a part of you that just can't <laughs> give it up. You just kind of want to let them know that you're all waiting and you know, they were late. But if they just walked in and said, sorry, we're late, you go, okay, we're on the same page. The, we do know the rules. We've all got the same rules, so now I can forgive you. And, and this is sort of what happens at the beginning of the play. I want to know that we're on the same page. And she doesn't apologize. They don't apologize because it's a deeper story than, the, than we know about who's at fault. And then it just goes. I mean, once it goes, it goes. At first it gets uh, outrageous and it's funny, and then it gets outrageous and dark. And it is a, a very dark play that fools you almost with all of its laughter. Um, it's directed by Matthew Warchus, who's just uh, he's considered the mighty Matthew, the boy wonder of Broadway Especially right this now. year with Norman Conquest. He's double nominated in the directing category right? at the Tonys. And Yasmina Reza is our, our writer. And as I said before, the cast is myself and Jeff Daniels, Hope Davis, and James Gandolfini. And we were all nominated, which has just uh, been... It's never happened before, the whole cast of a Broadway right? show. In the lead category. So we feel like we, we won. That's our win, that we <laughs> went But across. do you forgive Jeff Daniels for his co-star in Red Word Curtain, Beating you <laughs> <laughs> the year of Angels in America. Well, a little bit of you still wants that. Just a little there. bit. That's it. Well, listen, you always <laughs> want it. Although I know Deborah Monk and I really love her, so I was glad for her. But you always want it. Who doesn't want right, it? Right, right. But this foursome, I mean, that, that we were four nominated. It would have been so much more horrible to have one left out or, or three left out and one nominated. This way, we can all celebrate now. Mm -hmm. and, and that's that's truly for this particular play it, that is that is a win it's not just me trying to be noble it is a win there is another fascinating quirk because showbiz is after all all about irony and that is you are nominated against janet mcteer who played your I role know. in london and i understand she came to see you in she your performance, did, did you know and she, she was in the audience? she laughed her socks off. God did, bless her. Did you know her. she was there that night? No, thank God I didn't know. Because I, I would have thought that she was going, oh, God, that's not how to do it. And she's British, of course. But um, she laughed her socks off. We, sa we said, Matthew, did she laugh? And he said, absolutely. And then I went to see her beautiful performance, and she and Harriet. And it's just, you know, she's a class, class actress.
This, the good news is we're all in it together. You know, you do get that feeling, I think, right mm -hmm. now in New York. It's an extraordinary theater season. If you've seen any of the plays, I mean, there's from the musicals to the straight drama to the comedies, it's just extraordinary. Broadway's and back. It does. And it didn't look that way a few years ago. No, it didn't. And, and I don't know if it has to do with the Hollywood being down right now. I don't, I don't want to compare them, but I just think it's here. Great writing. And the fans, the audience the, are really coming out to see it. You can't drive. Have you tried to drive down? You can't drive yeah. down Broadway right now. In fact, they're going to close the street. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah. They're going to close Broadway to just pedestrian traffic. I think that's a disastrous idea. I think it is, too, just for the record. When you won the Oscar for Pollock, it was one of those fascinating quirks for those of us who follow the the process because you won first at the New York Film Critics Circle in a supporting race. Mm -hmm. And if that hadn't happened, the, the rest of it might not have happened. All of this is kind of woven together in a, in a, in a sequence which is interesting, isn't it? You didn't know until the New York Film Critics told you that year that you were in the race. No, that's then, quite right. And then you were on your way. That's quite right. And I think with the film, I, I guess theater does duplicate the film awards type of um well, they're peer group show business awards. Yeah. They are. And so th in that way, it's true. I was in only in the film critics and only nominated for the Academy Awards, not for Golden Globe or SAG or anything. So I felt I was in the race, and then, like, by mistake, or was I really in the race? But uh, it was good because I didn't expect to win at all. And in this one, there's a lot of us in it. And I don't know, Tom, I know you think, and you're right, you're, you're not wrong, that the final moment, the, the win, is all of it. I'm liking being in the race. I'm loving being in the race. Not to say, you know, my nose in the air, oh, God, who cares? <laughs> I do. Well, you don't need this award. Jane Fonda doesn't need this award. She's got two Oscars. I Janet do, too, need it. Do you? Okay, well, I that's, that's what I want to hear you say. All right, now let us, tell us I why do, you... I do, too, need it. Well, first of all, I think that Tony's the highest acting award. Mm -hmm. um, I think that being a theater actor is a very specific craft. It's a craft. And I think being a film actor, while it is a craft, it's also a lot about beauty. It's also a lot about editing. It's a lot about how, where the music came in and people went, oh, my God, she was gorgeous. And then when you look at what the actors are doing, they don't do a thing, just go, you know, <laughs> looking at, like, the fake sunset or whatever. So I think that there's a real specific vocal and physical craft that come to being on stage, and you're, man you're working with words, you're manipulating words. It's nice to wrap your mouth around a word as opposed to, you know, other things. And I didn't mean it like it just sounded. I meant, like, you know, making the day as you do in film or in, in television. So this is great. And so I think the Tony is the highest acting award and I know for me as a kid literally I got off that bus in 1983 19, <laughs> at Port Authority right down the street like lugging this is pre wheels on the suitcase wow. lugging my suitcase thinking golly maybe I should go back and you know hit the street and realize I was in the middle of one of the most amazing pools of talent and er at every step of the way and sometimes the steps were far apart but you feel somebody going come on come on and that's this community that is from the waiters to the to the actors the directors the people you work with it is everyone supporting the process of telling a story live it's a huge award and I do too <laughs> It'd also be nice to win for comedy because that is very rare, as we know. know they give out awards for the snooty stuff, but to win for comedy, they you know you you nailed it. Well, this is it, and this is the weird part: is everybody's deserving, right? Everybody's deserving, so that just goes without saying. That's why the win is something that seems kind of amorphous. Is that the right thing to say? That mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it just doesn't feel like I can hammer down the whys of it, but it would be lovely. That's all you know is it would be lovely. Did you have an acceptance speech prepared on Oscar night, and would you have one prepared on Tony night? Yes, I did on Oscar night. It was Ours was 45 seconds, mm -hmm. and I thought this is too important a time to be crying mm -hmm. and to be, and, and I knew I'm a crybaby, so I thought I'm going to do it. I've got real people to thank, and then I would for Tony night too because I, I personally think it's so Frigging dull to have people go. Well, um, uh, oh God, I, know, I, know. I didn't expect to win. Okay, there went ten seconds, and um, <laughs> oh God, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> boring. It's boring. <laughs> you know, it's boring. You're nominated. Do your homework. Right. I mean, that's how I feel. It's just you do. There are names that you want to thank, and then there's also the thing you want to say from your heart, and you don't always have enough time for both. That's the hard part of it all. And you're a performer. We expect you to give a performance at the podium. To be quite blatant about it, those of us who watch these award shows, put on a show, baby. <gasps> Your cell phone is it's so Hollywood. ringing. See, I'm not you a professional. I didn't turn this off. Oh, my God. <laughs> he's, he's the character from my play right now. Oh, that's right. That's right. Uh-oh. 
Well, good luck to you, Marshall. Thank you, Steve. That made, that made him feel like he needs to sign out right uh, now. Uh, 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 <laughs> good luck. My phone, I feel like an idiot. <laughs>